What's going on, guys? It is I, Sly Cooper 88, also known as Steve. And of course, as you can tell by the box, I'm finally getting around to it, finally getting to the throwbacks box of Comic Bento, which I was amazed that they actually sent me this big box, and I'll explain the book that actually, you know, warranted this. Um, but I've been away, guys, and I meant to do the throwback box, but I just decided that I was just going to get through the holidays, New Year's and stuff, and posting this kind of semi-late at night. Um, so it's still the 5th. Um, it's still, it, it's still the 5th of January, but probably you guys won't be seeing this until either tomorrow's time, which is my birthday, the 6th. Or you're gonna, or you'll be seeing this like right around like Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, maybe Monday. Um, so just be prepared in case like you see the weird days because this is being recorded at you know on the fifth at almost practically eight o'clock at night. Um, just for time section, so you know, because like I said, guys, they're ending the webcam service, so I'm actually recording webcam vids, you know like pre-taping them if you will so anyway guys we are in the throwback box but I've been trying to get back into write but first you know I've been getting trying to get back into writing I'm looking at a few potential gigs and submissions I don't know if I'll actually be able to participate in any of them um, but I'm hoping to um, I, I there's no set deadlines and stuff and most of them are from our friends down under so there's a few indie comic companies um, in the outback that are actually holding talent contests and anthology stuff so hopefully fingers crossed I'll be able to participate in those if not um, then I'll just pass the opportunities on to to some other people that I know that are looking for gigs but I also, guys, I wanted to act. I'm not going to show the Minions lounge pants because I did that the first time I tried to attempt this. And I thought maybe I probably shouldn't like have done that. But yeah, one of the gifts that I got for, for Christmas that I'm wearing right now is a Minions themed lounge pants or like pajama pants. So it's, it's quite comfy. It's made of good fabrics. But this I do want to show i thought that this was really cool i picked this up at hot topic during like their christmas eve like sales and stuff which is kind of like a long sleeve almost like almost like insulated sweatshirt kind of thing of like you know the classic silver age version of marvel so you've got like the you know the original silver to bronze age versions of like some of the inhumans um daredevil um, Richard Ryder's Nova, Dormammu, looking on here, Red, you know, Jack Kirby drawn Red Skull, um, classic Loki, Sam Wilson in his original, like, outfit, Tony in his classic red and gold armor, the, Mar the original comic book Mark III armor, so it's really cool, it's really cool I like dig the retro vibe and of course you can obviously tell here at the top you know Luke in his classic 70s Power Man outfit and then Iron Fist here at the bottom alongside Doc Ock so it, it's really cool guys it's like a, the classic Marvel Universe kind of on the on the shirt you know the Silver Age the Silver or Marvel Age of Marvel Comics so I thought that that was really cool to kind of you know wear that but anyway, guys, we, you know, December's Comic Bento box, which is known as the Throwbacks, uh, which are actually, I arrived on Christmas Eve, which shocked me. I, I thought it would have come, like, during this month, because I wasn't prepared for it to, you know, for it to actually, like, do that. Like, actually arrive, you know, early. So what I ended up doing guys was I ended up you know going through this reading the books but I figured that I'd get this review out of here you know amongst like you know since I'm trying to look for writing opportunities get back into writing but also because guys I've I want to get some of these books transferred um, so that way I can like start 
like packing up books for friends and stuff because I've been doing my own kind of mystery box stuff like finding coworkers that want to get into comics or love comics and are trying to build up their collections and just genuinely like look at you know like cool series or characters that I'm recommending to them so this is you know th this is certainly fun so let's get into these guys and I will show you why this throwbacks box had a big box actually and I freaking loved it because I thought it was so cool um, and the first one I instantly loved because I I've wanted to collect these but they're super expensive or like some of them are um, but volume two of the invincible Iron Man Marvel Masterworks so that that guy's is whoa look at that it's like got a weird sheen on there shiny cover no this okay I can't really hold that up for too long but this is really cool guys because like yeah this is a more the Marvel Masterworks are always like reprints of some of the classic comics like they clean them up and stuff to be able to you know like resell to people um, they're almost like miniature omnibuses, if you will. Um, and yeah, these things, the price tag here says like $24.99, guys. So like these things are like $25, $30 $30 a pop for some of these masterworks. Um, and this collects Tales of Suspense, you know, number 51 to 65. So this pretty much collects a lot of the you know a lot of the classical stuff a lot of the classic comics that dealt with crimson dynamo and the cold war stuff with black widow's first introduction to hawkeye and you know mandarin and and such so it's this this is really cool guys this is kind of it's kind of kind of a cool little I guess you can call it an homage. Um, the second one, which I've read, and this will go, because um, I'm going to make a, a TV show themed box um, for a couple of my coworkers if they're interested. Um, but Dan Abnett, who, anybody who's read his Guardian stuff and even his Nova stuff, like just anything science fiction in general, this guy's good with science fiction. Um, and it's the first volume, and it's named Memorial from Dynamite Comics, of the original Battlestar Galactica. Um, never got the chance to watch the original Battlestar Galactica. It, if it's on Netflix, I might just watch it just for, you know, giggles and laughs. Because um, I know my mother used to watch it a little bit, and she was a little bit of a fan of the original. So that... That'll be fun. I'm sure there's some, one of my coworkers is a classic sci-fi fan, and I know one of my coworkers may want to actually like read that and appreciate, you know, how cool that is. One that was really surprising to me, and I was very happy to get this too. Um, the first volume is called Focus Tested, which is really cool because it's a reprinting of issue one through four and it is uh, a Rob Liefeld creation or at least an inspiration which is the young bloods or young blood whatever you want to call it That is cool. I, I'm not gonna lie. That's really cool, guys. That you know, I because like this is classic image right here. Like this was one of the first titles that Rob Liefeld had actually come up with or conceived, but that other people have been able to work with. At least to my knowledge, you know, Joe Casey and who is it? Casey Donovan and Crabtree. But. Yeah, this basically is Rob Liefeld with create you know a little bit of creative control, but also letting Joe Casey and crew um, kind of do their own spin or reimagining of the Young Bloods, 
So I'm I'm very interested to see like what like what what they actually did with that cuz I I will admit I've read Spawn, I've read Savage Dragon. I'm a huge Savage Dragon fan even though I've only got just now I'm starting to get around to reading the first official volume, but I had a couple of Savage Dragon comics that I still own when I was growing up as well as a couple of Spawn and like one or two Young Bloods. So it, I, I, I was, these are like classic image characters. These are the characters from image that like basically built image from the ground up. So that's, that to me is freaking awesome that they actually, that I get to get to tinker around with that. And from Dark Horse, I think it's Dark Horse. It just says impress. And this is a $50 book, guys. But holy crap, is it worth it. And I promote the crap out of this all the time. Like, people... Some people are just like, Steve, can you not promote your own work rather than promote somebody else's? And I always laugh at that because... I, I, I promote this book because mainly... I'm actually friends with the author on Facebook. I've actually met and talked with him. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I really freaking enjoy this book. I'm actually reading through it right now. Hang on, guys. just want to make sure that there's... No room for error, because I, I heard that he was actually signing a couple of autographed versions of this, so I'm just making sure, guys, that we don't... I'm not missing anything. Probably not. Okay, nope, I'm not. I, I wasn't one of the lucky ones. Yeah, basically this box was cool because you had a chance to get a signed copy of this. And, like, there were a limited number set that were put in each bento box for throwbacks. You know, so to those of you out there who are watching this that got a signed copy from this bento box, um, congrats to you guys, because I, I, I would have... It's like I told, you know, the Great Southern Treadkill, Mr. James, you know, one of, you know, one of my YouTuber's core members... Um, familia, if you will, you know, YouTubers core familia. I'm actually okay with not getting an extra signed copy because I already have a signed copy um, from my Harvey Awards at the at the Harvey Awards at the Harvey Awards. I got a signed copy at the Harvey Awards, um, and I may just just because I love the book, maybe have like an extra copy that'll be like signed, but that probably won't be till like down the road. Um, cause I don't want to like buy all these copies of it, but at the same time, there's a part of me that wants to buy all these copies and especially if they're like signed copies to like actually give it to friends, you know, pass the love along. But, you know, my good friend, you know, my almost, I would say an inspiration to me all in and of himself. And if you guys don't know about him, um, check out his biography and watch his Ted talks and just watch some of the interviews with him from, not only like various you know sources, but also especially Baltimore Comic Con. I love listening to him. I love hearing him talk about it. He's a man with a lot of great passion, great family man. Um, but the Fifth Beetle, which is the story of the Beatles manager Brian Epstein, um, which is done by you know. I always have to say his. I always have to say V's name. V sometimes being his nickname among people, just because it's easier. But I always have to say it very slowly. Um, but Vive or Vivek J Tuwari or Tavari. I always say it any which variation, but I think it's pronounced Vivek J Tuwari. I think that's. Uh, I'm I'm sure if V sees this, he's probably gonna correct the correct the hell out of me. But like you guys know, I'm not good with pronunciations. And then of course Andrew C. Robinson, 
and of course Kyle Baker helping with the you know collaborative process of getting this book translated and made into comic form and a really great fact about this book too guys is this took 10 years for V to make um, for Vive or Viv you know yeah Vive I always see I'm get this is why I call him V just like everybody else does because I get his name mixed up but this took V and Andrew Robinson 10 years to make four of those years was for Robinson to make the panels and I want to show you guys why And I'll especially show you this congrats scene because look, I try to do this carefully because I love this because even though this is an extra copy, I still cherish this book. But look at, I don't know if you can see it, of course, obviously with my fingers in the way, but it's like, look at the detail that Robinson put into every page. Like this is like, it's just, it's breathtaking and it took and it actually took him four years to paint all of this yes you guys heard correctly Andrew Robinson hand painted every single one of these panels so every single page that is in this book even even this one all of these were hand painted these weren't just drawn sketched and then like printed these were hand painted, then scanned, then overlaid with the dialogue. Took four years, guys. Four years to make that. I could not make that up even if I wanted to. Could absolutely not make that up if I wanted to. And to talk about Fifth Beetle a little bit, because I know V likes talking about it, but I like talking about it too, because it's, it's, it, I'm not a music fan, I'm not the biggest Beatles fan, I've listened to a lot of Beatles music, but I've never, never always known kind of the story of the Beatles, I actually, there, I will truthfully admit there was a part of me that thought, okay, you know, they had all this hype, and they revolutionized the world, and oh, that's great, that's cool. I never knew, especially after reading this book, the lengths that Brian Epstein went through to get the Beatles that popularity, that wave, and to get them on the Ed Sullivan show. And this book casts, I mean, it, like I said, it took V 10 years. Four of those was for Andrew Robinson to do the artwork. But a lot of this was compiled research from the 90s, before the World Wide Web became this super big thing like it is now. This was handwritten research. This was Vive going to meet with people and actually talk to them, especially people that knew Brian in real life. And this is a great inspirational book, even if you're not a music fan. This is a great inspirational book because this shows the whole follow your dream. And if you follow it with enough reckless abandonment, you just might succeed. But what also makes me cherish this book and why I would want to spread it as much as I can is because it truly is, as V likes to say when he thanks people, it's a labor of love. And it really truly is, guys, not just because I say, oh, it took 10 years and four years of it was on artwork but all of this was factually correct information every bit of this book is Brian's life verbatim and the craziest fact about about Brian Epstein was the fact that he was a Jewish man in a time when there was a lot of anti-Semitism in Britain during that time um, that Liverpool wasn't known for anything. It was just a small port town that nobody, you know, honestly gave a crap about. And the third and most important thing to Brian, and I'm sure it may, and it's a little, not so much social commentary, but I bring it up because it's an interesting point. Um, it was a criminal offense in England in that time to be gay. So this was, like, if two men were caught holding hands in public, 
two gay men, they were thrown in jail for three to five years and fined. So you're, you take a so you take a Jewish man living in Liverpool in a small port town who was gay in a time when there was a lot of racial anti-Semitism towards Jewish people, and you pretty much have a character that is very relatable, a character that is in a situation where there is no hope for him, and. Vive was actually saying from people that were close to Brian, saying that the night that he discovered um, the Beatles, that they were just like this slick, greaser-esque, kind of like gang that were just like, you know, knocking back drinks and joking with people and stuff. Yeah, I know, you look at Paul McCart, you know, Paul, Ringo, John, and George, and you think to yourself, I think George was the last one. I always get confused on the fourth Beatle. So if, if, if it's not George, I do apologize. But when he, but he, and Brian, you know, and it's like, oh, you got all these, you know, like pub rat people, you know, these people in like, you know, that go to like the dive bars. And here's Brian, this well-organized, well-spoken man in a zoot suit, in a dive bar. And something with these four clicked in his head. And he went to everybody saying that they could not sign a record deal with these four. Because, especially here in, here in America during that time, there was no success of international music like there is now. What was great was that a couple of years ago, um, Brian Epstein was finally acknowledged and put into the, hall, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which was awesome. And I'm looking at the time. I don't mean to make this longer than I am, but I want to talk. But I feel like I have to talk about the significance of why this book, if you guys choose to purchase it, is worth the 50 bucks. Just from my own perspective. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to like push you know sales for V. I'm not being paid by V to do this. I do this genuinely because I love the book that much. And I tell people all about it because, to me, this is such a fun book. And it's a relevant book. It's a book that has a lot of themes that are still very relevant to people that are always chasing their dreams. So it's an inspirational book. I look at it as an inspirational book. It goes to what I call my coffee table selection, which I don't have a coffee table, but it's like books that I would lay out, like comics or graphic novels that people can look at and just go, wow, you know, it's like Steve has some range. You know, he actually, he indulges in, you know, pulp classics to modern superheroes to even stuff that have a lot of social commentary but also are motivational. I also love this book, guys, because it it truly really puts into perspective, even, like, even if, like I said, you're not a Beatles fan, you're not a music fan in general, it puts in perspective... The work that Brian put into trying to make the Beatles succeed. And it's also the personal tragedy with him between, you know, yeah, being a gay man, being Jewish in a time where not only was there any, you know, Semitism in Britain, but the fact that in the U.S., um, yeah, he was kind of just basically looked at as a joke. It's like, oh, you're a Jewish man trying to break into the music industry. People like you don't belong. But it's also the fact that Brian um, had a very bad drug addiction, which, you know, that is very heavily talked about in this book as well. You know, his battle with drugs and I, I wouldn't say alcoholism. You know, I've read the book, guys. I've seriously read this. You know, Brian had a lot of, you know, drug-related problems, especially with, like, you know, medicated antidepressants. He took a lot of antidepressants. So you're... So you're looking at a lot of stuff that went on in his personal life that's very sad, very tragic. But it's kind of cool that you see this evolution from Brian starting out as a guy that you know, okay, he, you know, was in the service, he was from a military background, at least from what I understood, or at least he was associated with people from the military, to, 
Then he goes to this dive bar, discovers the Beatles, try you know, creates all these crazy cockamamie ideas to try to get them on the Ed Sullivan show, to try to get them um, you know, record deals, to then riding the wave and then tragically at the age of thirty two, at the height and then breakup of the Beatles, um, passes away. He lived a very short life. Guys, he discovered the Beatles when he was 26. He died at 32. From drugs. Six years. He did... More in six years than most of us probably would do in our entire lives. Put that in perspective for most of you that think that you will never succeed at anything. Because it certainly puts things in perspective for me. But anyway, guys, we are almost near the 30-minute mark. I probably should have made this a short video, and I did kind of go off on a tirade with Fifth Beetle. I figured I would because, to me, I I don't promote this book just because, you know, oh, I'm friends with the author or the writer. I should pro help promote this book and try to get in friendly with them. No. Even if I hadn't talked with V, even if I didn't know V, um, etc. so forth, I still would have promoted this book because it's still a good book. But it just so happens that the man that, you know, helped write this book um, is, genuinely a, you know, is genuinely as excitable a person as I am. Um, so I... I mean, it's 50 bucks, guys. It's 49.99, and it's even higher for the, for like the signed copies and the collector's editions and all that stuff. But like I said, to me, it's well worth it because it, it's got a lot of cool stuff, guys. A lot of cool, a lot of cool history that's put in here. A piece of you know, pop culture, a very important part of pop culture, believe it or not. Because that's technically what the Beatles are. The Beatles were considered a huge part of pop culture. And they always will be. And this book kind of proves it. And not only that, guys, but this book, the craziest part about Fifth Beatle, this book has only been out two, two and a half years. It's already getting a movie deal. That V is actually, you know, V's written out the screenplay. They are aggressively looking for a director. Not only that, but with the blessings of the Beatles themselves and tons of private investors, etc., so forth, according to V, um, to, you know, Vive, or Vivek. Yeah, Vivek. I always keep wanting to say Vive. I don't know why, but that's like. I, you know, if you're watching this V, I'm sorry. I, I know people always, you know, try to pronounce it, you know, try to pronounce the dialect tone. But yeah, with, but what's really cool, guys, is when Fifth Beetle comes out, I don't know if it's going to come out this year. They're trying to aim for getting into production this year. But guys, when this comes out, it's going to be the first Beatles autobiography movie to feature actual Beatles music. They've secured the rights, guys, to actually play Beatles music in this film as it's being made here. So it's... What can you say to that, guys? I mean, that's two, two and a half years, and already it's getting its own movie, and it's become... I mean, this is a comic. This is like a comic book graphic novel. This is... Like the same kind of comic book graphic novel style of, say, like Watchmen. Well, not as dark as Watchmen, but what, you get what I mean, guys. This is basically, this is becoming recognized. Like, this is, this has been featured on CNN, M, you know, MSNBC, 
tons of like Beatles radio s programs have had you know V on talking about this, and the fact that you know the guys the guys and gals at Comic Bento thought that this was good enough to put into the throwbacks box, I greatly agree with them. Because this is not only a throwback to classic, you know, graphic novel comics, but guys, this is a throwback period because we're going back in time to an era. We're, we are basically seeing the history of a big part of, you know, worldly pop culture in comic book graphic novel form. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to stop myself there because I could keep rambling on this video and Lord knows you guys don't need to watch an hour video of me basically praising the hell out of this book. But do yourselves a favor guys, but do yourself a favor guys, if you know somebody that has this book, even if you don't buy it guys, if you just ask somebody that does have it. You know, if they can look at it and just like, you know, read through it a little bit, guys. You know, that that that's all that V would ask that people do is just at least like check the book out, you know, and actually just experience, you know, this journey, as he says, you know, into the life of the man that, you know, the life of the man that without him, um, there would be no Beatles. There would be no new wave of music and rock and roll. You know, so it stuff to put in perspective. But anyway, guys, that is the throwbacks box for um, the month of December for Comic Bento. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed this lineup. I thought it was a fantastic lineup. I mean, you got classic Marvel. You got you know Young Bloods from Image, a throwback to classic Image. Um, Throwback to classic TV with Battlestar Galactica, and a throwback to classic, obviously, pop culture. I mean, guys, there's a lot of people that, you know, poke fun at Comic Bento because they say that they give filler books. I'm going to be honest with you guys, there's no filler for Comic Bento. Every book, even if it's a book I don't much care for, I've given books that I've got in these bento boxes to friends, and they love them. They've actually thought about subscribing to Comic Bento. So, Comic Bento, in and of its own right, is becoming a pop culture phenomenon because it's, you know, you're getting, you know, books with a theme. Some books you may like, some books you don't. If it's books that you don't like, Think of friends that love comics that you know that you can give these to, or people that want to get into comics. To me, I always say with Comic Bento, even if it's books that you don't much care for, it's books that you can help spread the love of comics, you know, around. But anyway, 33 minutes and counting, guys. I'm going to leave the video off right here. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you for the gray area, because that is January's theme. January's theme for Comic Bento is called the gray area, and I'm very excited for that one, guys, because it's the theme of that is heroes who become villains and villains who become heroes. And why does part of me think um, that Irredeemable or Incorruptible from Mark Wade is going to make you know the cut of that box? We'll wait and see, guys. But I got a feeling.